Hey guys, Everything Sportsman here. I know it's been a long time since I made a video, but I've decided that I am going to make my uh, my slug crown back down into a pellet gun. And the reason being is because I don't have the upgraded regulator, I don't have the upgraded things in it, so it puts a lot of stress on the mechanics of the gun, I reckon. Um, when I shoot the slugs, I can hear the air go, or fill up the regulator again, and I just kind of don't like it the way that it's set up. It's not what I expected. It's not as uh, consistent as it should be because I'm trying to get too much out of the gun and it's not. It's just not able to handle it. So I'm going to put it back down to shooting pellets. I'm going to do it today um, with the Hades as its primary pellet and just because it's such a pretty gun. This one is going to be my number one. Uh, my other gun is going to be my backup. Hopefully, as long as I didn't ruin the regulator that's in there. Um, but anyway, first things first, I got to bleed the air out of the tank. But I got everything set up for today's process. Uh, we're going to be using the Caldwell Chronograph, the crown with a 600 millimeter barrel and bipods and all that stuff. Just the normal normal setup on the crown. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the air out of the tank, or out of the regulator, turn the regulator down and get ready to start uh, tuning this gun. First thing you gotta do to take the air out of the, the tank, or the regulator is remove the tank. My regulator's leaking. It didn't close off how it's supposed to do it. So if I look down here at the bottom, both of my gauges are at zero. That's kind of the issue that I'm having is I don't think I'm getting my consistency because it's not doing how it's supposed to do. You probably can't see that. If I get any closer, it won't focus. But anyway, everything went to zero, so I don't have to shoot around off to, uh, to get the air out of the regulator. That's what you would typically do is if there's air still in the reg after you take the barrel off, you shoot around just to clear out the air in the regulator. The next thing you got to do is come down here and adjust this screw. This, there's a little screw in there, in this little hole. Sorry about that, my battery died. You can raise the regulator pressure with the tank installed, but you cannot lower it with it installed because you'll end up damaging the regulator. So, try this one. I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise first because I can't remember which way it is. You know, I think it's clockwise to lower the rig pressure. Just screw this on and see what it goes up to. So, it is clockwise to lower the rig pressure and counterclockwise to raise it. I'm gonna set this one at 120 reg just to start, um, but my other one's only running like 113 or something like that, but I wanna push this one about 120. I've changed my mind. We're gonna do it around 113 reg pressure. Okay, now, I'm gonna see what kind of string I can shoot without having to adjust the hammer spring tension and what kind of speeds it's getting right now on uh, pi or on max uh, power. Okay, so that's not good. We have a standard deviation of 20. Average is 930 feet per second. So, I mean, it's not bad on feet per second, but the standard deviation needs to be a lot lower. I'm gonna try to get the standard deviation down to under two, but if I hit somewhere right under four, I'm fine. Um, I like my standard deviation to be very, very low, obviously. A lot of people do, but uh, I'm pretty good at tuning this thing, so let's go ahead and break it down and figure out what I can do with it. Okay, in order to break this thing down, you gotta do a few different things. Um, there's a, it, I don't know why they did this, it's kind of annoying, but there's plenty of different uh, Allen keys that you'll have to use for this uh, breakdown portion. First of all, you have to take 
the safety off of it. But I'm gonna go ahead and unload it, make sure that it's good to go. All right, the safety is removed by a two and a half millimeter Allen key. Okay, and then you gotta take off the power wheel. But when you take off the power wheel, there's two little ball bearings in there that you have to worry about losing. And this is actually a smaller Allen key as well. The one to take off the power wheel is a two millimeter Allen key. These are the two little ball bearings that you have to worry about losing. Okay, now that those two are off and all the parts are consolidated into one spot, you have two more different size Allen keys in the bottom to take off the stock. The back one is a three millimeter hex key. Yeah, and the front is a four. And you'll want to hold these together. If you're doing it like I'm doing it, you're going to want to hold the gun together because it will come apart and you'll drop pieces. And that's the last thing you want to do on a $2,000 gun. Okay. And then the whole uh, shooting mechanism lifts off. All right, now you don't need the stock for the rest of the tuning process. Oh, and a shout out to the winner for uh, the giveaway. His, his name was David Hunt um, out in the UK. Picture now. Congratulations, David. Now we are going to get the power wheel and put it back on there. Make sure not to lose the little bearings. The reason why you can flip it over like that is because those little bearings have a little bit of grease on them and they stick in the holes, but sometimes they fall out. So be very, very careful when you do that. All right, now the power wheel is back reinstalled how it's supposed to be. Then you turn it all the way to max. Now there was somebody that was watching me do this once before on one of my other videos, and he said he cringed every time he saw me hit the riser of the gun. So let me make sure I got the right size Allen key because they like to switch these up on you, which I don't. Yeah, there it is. So to adjust the hammer spring is a one and a half millimeter. Now, the guy said he cringed every time I, uh, I hit the, re the riser of my gun, or the receiver of my gun. So this time, so that he don't have to cringe, I've got some uh, electrical tape here, and I'm gonna put it around it so that when I do turn it, I don't hit the riser with that metal on metal. I imagine I only need one little wrap here. If it gets too thick, then you're going to have issues. Each time you stick this Allen key in there, it's very, very fine. So you have to make sure that you get it seated all the way in. Otherwise, you can strip it out. Okay. Once it's on max, you want to tighten this Allen key all the way down until you can't turn the wheel anymore. And then back it off just enough so that you can turn the wheel. Okay, now that you're close up and can see what I'm doing, I'm making sure it's seated all the way in and then turning it. Get all the way in there and then turn it. And then you're constantly turning this wheel to see when it hits because you don't want to over tighten it. You can end up breaking it. As expensive these guns are, they're a little bit finicky. Or they're little, their parts are small so they end up breaking. I've never broken apart because usually I try to be super careful. Okay, you see that? I can't turn it very easily, or I can't turn it at all without breaking it. So I'm gonna back it off just enough to where it turns. All right, now it can turn. If I go just a little bit, now I can't turn it anymore, okay? So you want to back it off just enough to where you can turn it. And that is called maxing the hammer spring. Okay, from this point, you want to make sure that the gun's got full air, because otherwise, if you run out of air during what you're doing, what's going to end up happening is uh, you're just going to throw it all off, and then you're going to have to restart. All right, there we are. Gun's maxed out at 250 bar. The next thing you want to make sure you have is a full magazine of pellets. This process takes a lot of pellets, so make sure that you're prepared for that. All right, there we have it, a full magazine. Oh, and if I didn't mention it, it's a 22 caliber if you didn't read the Hades. Okay, here we go. So you gotta keep a record of your shots. 
the whole idea is to find that bell curve. So when you start shooting at first, it's going to go like this, and then it's going to start dropping off. You want your, you want to set it to a, somewhere in this, in a flat line. So it'll drop and then it'll go down some more and then it'll drop some more and then it'll just drop off in your feet per second. So this is about the highest and this is where you're gonna be most inconsistent. Somewhere in the middle of this, you'll be consistent. You'll be inconsistent here and then somewhere here-ish is where you'll be consistent. And I'll show you what that looks like later on the, on the computer. So we're gonna do the first shot string at max thing and so the reason why when you shoot and number it is because you'll shoot one and then you'll turn it one turn okay and now I'll back it off one turn there it is I'm gonna go ahead and get my other camera set up so that I'm not moving this camera around the whole time so give me one one moment okay so now I've backed it off one turn and I'm gonna go ahead and shoot another round 949. So I'll go in here and write in 949. All right, now you flip it over and back it off one more turn. And what I mean by one turn is from one side to the other, not a full turn. All right, and you flip it over again, charge it, and send it. That one's 932. 932. Then you flip it over back it off a turn, and then send it. 9.30. This process is gonna go on for a while, and then, so I'm just gonna fast forward through this process until we get some numbers, and then I'll tell you what happens on the rest. Okay, I currently shot a whole bunch. I'm gonna go plug these numbers in and see if I got any kind of consistent line, um, descent, consistent descending line. I've never seen it before. Maybe it's because I've never adjusted it far enough before, but uh, it was high and then it started dropping off and then it leveled out and then it went way high again and then it stayed high. So. I think I might end up having to turn my rig pressure up a little bit so that I can get the more consistent hammer tuning, but I'm gonna go plug this into the computer and see what it looks like. Okay, at this point you insert all the data. So 949, enter um, 932. Okay, once all the data has been entered in, you highlight it all like this, insert line, this one. Okay, now if you look at that, this chart that it brought up, there is no consistencies. It doesn't have a fall off or anything like that. So it seems to me like I'm gonna have to raise my regulator pressure so that I can get more consistent shots. Basically all that means is, is I'm gonna have to redo everything again, so. Regardless, this is part of tuning, and like I said, it takes a lot of pellets to do it. I just realized I was really zoomed in on my face. I apologize. Now, if you look closely, the only trending line that I have is right at the beginning, after two or three turns, and it's trending down. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, this 926 here, or yeah, that one was 926 feet per second. That one kind of, uh, it was tight going in, so that kind of makes sense how it did that. But what we're looking for is not what we're seeing. <laughs> I'm going to back it all the way off to when, uh, when that first trending line was going down, and which is like one or two turns away from max and see what kind of standard deviation I can get out of it. Um, just to see, I guess. 
So at this point you kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep adjusting the rig pressure, adjusting the hammer spring. I'm going to keep doing it over and over and over again until I get my standard deviation and my feet per second about where I want them to be. Right now it's it's shooting it's shooting where I want it to be in feet per second. Um, when it's around like anywhere from 940 to 960. Uh, but my standard deviation isn't good so i'm gonna keep doing this until i get it right and then i'll let you see the after or the finished product Thank you. okay after a bunch of work and a bunch of time and a bunch of pellets finally i was able to get the tune that we we're looking for i'm now shooting about 145 feet per second average um here let me just show you Well, there you go, there's the results. And I'm only running about 110 bars. Yeah, so let's go out and shoot it and see what kind of performance it does with some distance and some uh, grouping. Okay, I'm walking down now to put this camera by the target and you'll notice that the target already has a couple holes in it. I shot three rounds to put it back on zero after the tune. I'll show you the three rounds. There's the first round. I was aiming for that dot and then I put two through the same hole. So uh, now we're gonna go back up and do a little bit of accuracy testing and then I might stretch out today, I might not, just because this video is probably already gonna be a little bit long. All right, I'm back up on the top side. It's gonna be 35 yards is how far we're shooting. That's how far I just zeroed it at. So uh, all right, let's go ahead and throw a couple shots down range and then I got some some other cool things I want to shoot just to kind of see what happens. All right. All right, here we go. I'm going to shoot 35 yards, three shot group. I'm shaky after walking up that hill. All right, I'm aiming for the top left and do the same thing. I'm aim bottom right. I pulled that a little bit. All right, bottom left. I'd say that's pretty doggone good. Now I'm going to go down there and set up my special targets and one, I want to see what the pellet will actually do to it, if anything, and two, I want to obviously see the same thing with the other target. So anyway, I'm going to go set them up. Okay, so if you have noticed, what I've done is put sticks of chalk all over the daggum target and then I also have a hunk of lead. So my dad was working on my boat and he left his chunk of lead in it and I want to shoot it and see what happens. Then I just got sticks of chalk everywhere on here that it's going to be fun to shoot at. All these little pieces of broken chalk. I'm just going to see kind of what happens when you shoot chalk. Does it dust or does it just break apart? I don't know. But my predictions are it's going to dust. I just want to know if it does anything to that lead. It's starting to rain on me so I'm going to have to do this quick before I ruin my camera gear. All right, first thing we're going to aim at is the chalk on the top right. Got it. All right, we're going to aim at the lead. I'm going to try to center it, see if I'd put a dent in it. All right. I need some more pellets. I'm not certain if this light drizzle is going to mess with my cameras or not, but it's starting to come in pretty thick. I did wonder how much your rain affects the shooting of a air gun you know like how many raindrops the pellet actually hits on the way to the target you know interference and all but I guess we could find out today as long as it don't rain too hard because I don't want to ruin my stuff my equipment all right what we're gonna do is work the chalk from right to left across that top board 
Oh, that wasn't chalk. That was a piece of paper, or tape or something. Here we go. That's pretty cool. Yeah, killing it. All right, the one on the left that's standing. I grazed it. The one in the middle that's standing. Must be a little bit of right to left wind. There we go. The one that I knocked down at first. There it goes. The one that's right behind that one. Yep. Long one all the way to the right. Nice. The one that was just in front of it that's laying facing me. Yep. How about this one? One by itself. Okay. I think I got them all. All but the little pieces down there. Chalk actually makes a fun target. I might have to get some more. Oh, I got a couple more rounds. There's more chalk down here. Yep. Uh-huh. Oh, I skipped it in front of it. And I'm out. All right, I'm gonna get the cameras inside before they get run, and then I'll do my closing. Well, I'm not sure that you can call it carnage, but you could say I dusted it. Look at him. All the, this is that first one I thought was chalk, but it wasn't. It was just a piece of tape. Just dusted all that chalk everywhere. That's pretty cool. All right, moment of truth. What did it do to the lead? Oh, it did put a dent in it. Look at that. That's a pretty deep little dent. Huh. You know, I kind of didn't expect it to do anything to the lead, honestly, but it's got a pretty nice little dent in it. All right. Uh, maybe in a future video you let me know if you want to see it I will see how many pellets it takes to drill through the center of one of these I hope you found it to be a good video this time um, there was something I wanted to say all right guys so the final tune was kind of difficult um, so I found out that I've been doing it kind of wrong uh, I haven't been turning off enough cranks usually I only do like a magazine or a magazine and a half but it took three magazines to find the sweet spot. So when, when or if you decide to do these tunings, then that's pretty much what you gotta look at is, uh, is don't be afraid to back it further than what you feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable backing it that far, but then I was having issues because I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't tune correctly. And I probably shot, I probably shot 200 pellets a day to tune that gun. Um, so learn from me, just keep backing it out until you hit that sweet spot. And that's what I did. I have a, <laughs> so I did the standard deviation a couple times. The first time I did it, it was like a 0.07 for five shots. And then the next time I did it was a, uh, like a 2.1 or something. And then the last time I did it was a 1.0, but I shot three shots. And then the and it was at a 0.07 and then the last shot put it at a 0.10 and i got the screenshot here to show you um yeah so shooting slugs for me isn't uh isn't over i'm not done shooting slugs the thing with it is though is neither one of my uh air guns have enough power i don't think to get the performance that i'm looking for out of slugs therefore for me to shoot slugs, I'm going to upgrade to the uh, FX Impact with the Power Plenum. That way I got a lot more adjustability and I'll be able to maximize what I can get out of the slugs, which I'm really happy about, really excited about doing. The issue is, is funds. Um, there was a guy on here the other day, well the other day, it was a long time ago, when I was talking about the Impact and what guns I wanted to do and all this stuff, and he said that 
I could be sponsored by you guys. And he said that he wouldn't be afraid to throw in a hundred dollars or throw in a, he said a hundred dollars. And he said to ask my followers to do it. I'm not one to ask for things, so I'm not gonna. Um, but if you wanna see the impact quicker, then that's the way to do it is throw me some loot and I will get one and then I will do all the, re all the uh, stuff on it, all the videos and everything. Everything that I do to it, I'll put it on YouTube. Um, I would like to get the 35 caliber one, but hey, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. I'd love to get my hands on the impact so I can play with it. I have two crowns and I did a lot of trading and willing and dealing for one of them and the other one I put on a credit card and I'm still paying for it. So yeah, this is, this is it. If you want to see videos or anything, just let me know. Follow my Facebook page. Uh, it's Everything Sportsman. And that's where I post a lot of stuff with me and my family and things that YouTube would demonetize me for or what have you. So by all means, I'm Everything Sportsman. I'm out.